Welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Tanova Healthcare. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, Tanova's emergency room doctors, nurses, and staff are on hand and ready to go when you or a loved one need quality, efficient care. From broken bones to life threatening conditions, trust Tanova Healthcare as I do. Go to tanova.com for more. All right. I uh, want to show you here, we'll start the segment by looking at Tennessee's current resume. That's according to RealTimeRPI.com as of about 10 p.m. last night. So the numbers might have shifted a hair left or right, but uh, you can see their overall record 19-11, that 20th win over Tusculum will not count. Uh, SEC record 11-7, and seven, their RPI up to 43rd now. Strength of schedule, this is, the, this is what they're hanging their hats on. That number 23 strength of schedule really helps them. Non-conference record was eight and four, but they did play a tough strength of schedule. Road record four and seven versus RPI top 50. That's the tough number. Tennessee right now still really just has that one good, good win over Virginia. Uh, now they do have seven wins total against top 100 opponents, but only one inside the top 50, which is Virginia, and that could haunt them. Uh, you see their record against 51 to 100. You see their record against 100 to 200. Uh, you see it against 200 plus those three losses. Uh, to the 100 to 200 range, two of those to Texas A&M. Obviously, that could come back to haunt them a little bit. Jimmy Dykes says the Vols are in the tournament. Joe Lenardi probably has them in this morning. I haven't checked, but are they in? Do you think they are a lock at this point? I personally think they still need to win, win a game in Atlanta. Thoughts? I think yesterday was not a play-in game, but a play-out game for the loser. Um, so I yep. think that by us winning it, we're still in great position. However, if we go in the SEC tournament and lose the first round game, uh, we'll be sitting there selection Sunday sweating. I think if Tennessee loses the first round game and it's Arkansas, they're sweating. Uh, but still with a pretty decent chance to get in, if they lose that first round game to Auburn or South Carolina, I think there's a pretty good chance they're out. So I, I don't agree with Dykes. I think there's still a little bit more to be done. Okay. I think there is too because you're going to have these conference tournaments where you know, like last night, Green Bay got beat. They were the regular season champion. They got beat in the Horizon League. Now, I, th I think the Horizon will be a one-bid league, but some of these other Belmont leagues. Belmont lost last Yeah, time. Belmont. So, so you, you just got to watch that. I don't think it's a done deal yet because of the variables from these conference tournaments. Don, you do the NIT selection committee. Uh, you've been in the, you use the same tools, the same team sheets that the NCAA committee uses. Is Tennessee in at this point, in your opinion? No, they're not in. Nobody's in right now except I, the Ivy League champion, you know, which is an automatic <laughs> okay, qualifier. Okay, okay. You know, Technically, you know, nobody's you know, in. And I, I'm I, guessing I, Virginia's and, and I in. Check, I check with, with Jimmy and Joe, you know, and they're not making the decision as to who gets into the NCAA <laughs> tournament. They have absolutely nothing to do with it except, you know, to garner a lot of publicity for themselves. You know, this Tennessee team has to win. They, they've got to win some basketball games to assure themselves of being able to get in. You know. There's three games that you know they could possibly win, you know, in Atlanta, and they got to come through and play like they played recently. Now the schedule won't be as favorable as the last three out of four games that they played. There's no doubt about it because they're obviously going to have to get through, you know, some teams that are going to be be ready to play. But uh, you know, this Tennessee team is not in the NCAA tournament right now. Okay, tell you what, let's take a look at some some numbers and some factoids here. We're going to quickly run through these things. First of all, thank you notes. Tennessee needs to be sending thank you notes to these four teams. Wichita State for going 32-0. Tennessee lost that game, but you talk about strength of schedule. Every time Wichita State goes out and wins another game, that helps UT. NC State, they were projected to be a pretty middle-of-the-pack ACC squad. They've been a little, they've been middle of the pack, but 18 and 12, that's better mm -hmm. than I think some people would have expected. They beat Tennessee, so it helps that they haven't just tanked. Wake Forest has been a bad team this year. They got a bad RPI of about 120 or something, but they did beat Duke uh, just a week ago. That helped. And then, of course, Virginia. I mean, Tony Bennett and Virginia going 20 and 5 and 5, winning the ACC. That's the game that Tennessee's hanging its hat on right now. Uh, Vol fans to do list for right now pull for Tennessee to take care of business. Okay, no kidding. Pull against upsets in league tournaments. As Mike said, some of these Cinderella's win their league tournaments. They're going to snatch automatic bids, and some of those teams that would normally get it won't make it in or will steal an at-large bid. Uh, pull against rival bubble teams, and there you see bubble teams 30 through 39. We broke these down last week. 30 through, 30 through 39, most likely those teams are all going to get in. Typically, 
looking at the last three years since the tournament expanded to 68, if you're in the RPI top 40, you got a great chance of making the field. So a lot of those teams are going to make it. Mark, looking at that list, uh, is there anything you want to point out about those teams? Well, there's some interesting ones uh, that make them weaker, like a Colorado team. Their best player actually tore his ACL, so does the committee take that into account if they er lose early in their, in their tournament? And North Dakota State and Toledo uh, both have very little top 150 or top 50 wins, uh, and they don't have a very good, uh, they haven't really beaten anybody. So right. if they lose early, they could be sitting on the outside looking in. It's like Sunday. So basically, pull against those teams. Pull against all of those teams for your Tennessee fan. Now let's go to, that's the strong bubble teams, 30 through 30, 39. Here, these teams, I see them purely on the bubble, and here's why. Of the last three years, have been 111 at large bids, 15 of them went to teams 40 through 49. So about five of these teams per year in this range get in. So about half those teams are getting in, half those teams won't be. You see Tennessee, uh, anything to point out there, Mark? I would say uh, Dayton would be one that's definitely in, uh, have some really good wins. Uh, uh, Minnesota is a team that's seven and 10 in the Big Ten. Uh, and just, I don't think they'll have done enough in their conference, although a good conference to get in. Okay, and then we move down the list a little bit, 50 to 59. Uh, if we can, the next pure, there we go. And uh, you'll see there about four of those teams, based on the last three years again, about four of those teams each year from this range make it in. And you see Wisconsin Green Bay lost last night in one of those conference uh, upsets. Belmont upset in their conference tournament last night. Missouri might have played, I mean, they really have some work to do in the SEC tournament to get back in the NCAA tournaments. Uh, good graces, the selection committee's good graces. But all of these teams are squads Tennessee fans need to be pulling against. Well, Harvard's in. Harvard is in. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, they, they, won, their, they won the Ivy League. But you need to be pulling against everyone but Harvard. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Build a time machine and pull against Harvard's the only team that's definitely in right now, right? Eastern Kentucky beat <laughs> Belmont, and Belmont's going to be sweating because uh, Belmont didn't beat anybody non-conference, and they actually have four sub-100 losses. Now, uh, Belmont, Belmont didn't Belmont beat North Carolina. North Carolina. They right, did beat they Carolina. did beat North Carolina. I'm sorry, besides that, you're One right. of the great okay. wins ever you know, and, for Belmont. And then RPI 16 above. Typically, one of these teams a year gets in. Just one a year. So There's your Razorbacks. Yeah. Now, those, those teams are most likely on the out looking in. But look at California. Don't take them for granted. That California team, I looked at their resume compared to Tennessee's last night. It's not bad. Even though their RPI is down there, it compares favorably in a lot of different ways with Tennessee. Yeah, they have four wins in versus the top 50, and they beat Arizona, who was a number one in the country for a while. Yeah. So I hope you had your pen and paper out there. Those are the teams that this week you need to be rooting against, except for Harvard, uh, because they're already in, as Mike pointed out. All right, uh, when we come back, we're going to talk a little spring football. Uh, Tennessee got kicked off this week. We'll talk about that. Everything from Pig Howard situation, injuries, youngsters, coaching situations, on and on and on. Plenty more basketball to come. Come on back on the Sports Source. <laughs> 